a little bit different when you're not holding just the anvil. Piece of shit. Well, I guess that answers that question, doesn't it? When you label a box, 60 foot pounds delivers the power of air and it does not even break loose. 40 foot pounds, not worth it in my opinion. Okay, just for S and G purposes, 40 foot pounds. Okay, 43. charge nah I won't do it either huh close though it's got more kick than the other one just out of curiosity it might be funny yep look at that quarter inch ratchet all day <laughs> laugh at your situation but man i tell you when i'm not exactly cussing and screaming and i hear it coming down from the other end of the shop i'm like my day's not looking so bad at this point you know <laughs> oh, i'm sorry to have a little bit of joy with your misery man my bad my bad <laughs>
I, I have one over here, buddy. If you want to keep using it for a little bit, make sure you actually like it before you make a decision. That's all right. That doesn't hurt to try right now, you know? Well, if you like it, you like it, you don't, you don't. At least you didn't have to spend 250 bucks or 300 to find out. Okay, I'm not sure what's up with that. Lights don't go on. It's getting pissed off. It's flashing an SOS here. Am I putting too much uh, resistance behind it? If I wait a few seconds, then it starts to work again. Weird. Well, okay, I only pulled the trigger twice that time. This guy is not happy. I wonder if you're using it a bunch, if it just gets hot and that's what makes it upset. I'm gonna find out once we get through a series of bolts here. Okay, so most of my work up top is done. With the exception of some electrical connectors and everything else I think can be done from underneath. So I guess we'll go under. All right, Tommy, yeah or nay, what'd you think today? So, Justin was kind enough to let me use the snap-on today, being that I gave back the Maco. Um, I broke twice uh, within, what, a few weeks. Uh, snap-on's really nice. Um, I wish to see that it was a little more RPMs, maybe a larger battery, and maybe a uh, a battery life on the battery itself gotcha. but um as for handling and everything else i like the snap on cool
What's going on everyone? Justin again, as always, thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back if you made it this far. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of the real world. Got a chance to put both the long reach Snap-on cordless 14.4 to the test, as well as the short one to the test. Both are of the Brute series. Both do what they say they're supposed to do, okay? This says it has a 70 foot pound breakaway and it broke loose at 73 or 74 foot pounds. I can't say the same exact thing about the Earthquake XT. A lot of people recommended the Earthquake XT. They said the AVE really liked it. A lot of good people out there on YouTube that also liked it. They said it was a phenomenal tool. I had a couple issues with it. One you saw in the video clip. It did not do what it said it was going to do. It said it could break loose at 60 foot pounds. It did not. It did not do it at 50. It did not do it at 40. I didn't even bother doing it at 30 because if I can't even break loose something that's one third less the value of what's on the box, then it's just not worth it in my opinion, okay? If it says it could do 60 foot pounds, do 60 foot pounds. It could not do 60 foot pounds. It couldn't do 50. It couldn't do 40. And to be honest, I felt like the RPMs were slightly less than that of the Snap-on, which both Tommy and myself had said, yeah, the Snap-on, a little bit slower than we'd like to see, but I would compare this speed or the RPM of the Snap-on to the Milwaukee. This is not the brushless technology, okay? I know that Snap-on has come out with brushless technology with the half inch. They just introduced the 3 8 They've now introduced the die grinders, which I'm not sure are brushless just yet. There is talk about them going to a brushless 3 8 ratchet, but until they can make the technology fit the design for the mechanic, uh, it's not gonna be introduced just yet. Now there is talk about possibly going with a brushless design when it comes to the 3 8 cordless ratchet. But one thing to keep in mind, for the longest time, Snap-on remained brushed. And I had this question too. Why haven't they gone brushless? There is so much more behind the engineering that you and me, are. we just don't understand just yet, okay? Understand that when I'm using these ratchets or the impact, like the half inch or the 3 8 gun, there's gonna be times that I'm gonna be underneath the transpan or differential or I'm gonna be working around coolant or taking apart cylinder heads or dealing with oil pans and oil and all these chemicals if they get down in here, especially fuel. Okay, there's another one, which is an ignitable compound. So we don't wanna have something that's sparking and then have issues, right? So I'm sure there's a lot of technology that goes behind this. When Milwaukee developed theirs, I don't know if they developed it for the mechanic or if they developed it more for the construction worker that occasionally runs into lag bolts and needs to use it. I can tell you from a mechanic's perspective, who used Milwaukee for a couple of years with the cordless ratchet, the 3 8 stubby and the half inch, I didn't have any issues when chemicals came into contact, but I also never got them covered in fuel. Okay, real fuel, not the fuel Gen 2 series Milwaukee. Let's get that, let's get that straight. Now all of them were of the fuel lineup. And none of them did I really have issues when it came to breakaway torque. When the tool worked, it worked. When it didn't work, it didn't work, okay? There was no three to five second lapse where it needed a little break in order to catch back up to work again. But again, this is brushed, that was brushless, okay? I don't know if that is something to take into consideration there. One other thing I wanted to touch on that Tommy did make mention of that I was unaware of until I did the video before that you guys commented on is there actually is a battery life indicator so long as you're not colorblind, okay? If you lightly pull the trigger, you see green, the battery is fully charged. If it goes more of an amberish orange color, much like this ratchet, you're at about 50%. If it turns red or starts flashing red, uh, you're down to about 20, 30, maybe even 0% where you need to go ahead and charge it, okay? So, the, the battery life indicator is this little tiny LED bulb that's fit into the handle. Didn't know that, you guys told me about it. That's why I love doing videos like this because things that I don't know that you guys know, you can go ahead and tell us and I appreciate that. If you have more information about any product that we're reviewing, please feel free to share it in the comments. All right, let's talk about my likes and dislikes with the Brute Long Reach versus the Brute Stubby. Which did I like better? Which did I like least? Let's go ahead and talk about that. So for straight up or down removal, love it. Love it, love it, love it. 
It's freaking amazing. It gets into tighter spots as you saw in the video where I took the brute short and I tried to get around the bell housing area and the tool was just kind of like right there where it still worked, but the long reach definitely gave me a little bit more swing so I can actually get a little torque on it after I was all said and done just to make sure that they were tight. Okay, I also had said that I wouldn't mind using it for a cylinder head job, which I'm not on one right now. Okay, I'm, I'm wrapping up a timing job on an Isuzu. I'm wrapping up a transmission swap on a Subaru. But I did buy it specifically to try to run the fasteners out of a cylinder head job, which I think the long reach is gonna come in handy for. When it came to the Brute Short, now here was the deal. With the long one, I have not had the I need a brake light come on at all with the long reach but I did with this short. And I would like to ask you guys this question. Those Snap-on fanboys out there, please let me know. Is the little SOS light LED light that strikes up the way that it does and the tool not working for three to five seconds, is that a way of it like saving itself and not burning out? Let me know down in the comments, I'd appreciate that. All right, so between the two, when it came to the long reach, I did not like using it at a horizontal angle. Way too much weight heavy, top heavy, right? I really enjoyed it up or down. When it came to the Brute short, it could be sideways, it could be horizontal, it could be up, it could be down, it's comfortable either way. So if you're looking for a comfort level, as far as these two go, and you find yourself more times than not in a position like this, you're gonna wanna go with the standard length. If you do like the long reach capability for tightening or loosening, then you might want the long reach, okay? This thing does work great, like I said, either up or down, works great. When it came to this though, night and day, all the way, tight spots, works great. Another feature that I liked about both of these is that when I did put leverage behind it, even though my finger is right here where you'd have to press it to, do, to release it, it's actually, my pinky naturally falls on the top side, not on the bottom side, so I'm not actually loosening the battery when I'm putting extra behind it, okay? The Milwaukee, the problems that I had with Milwaukee was the tabs would break off in the battery and I'd have to get another battery. I probably went through, I had the M18 batteries warranted out twice, I had the M12 batteries warranted out three times. So in my opinion, the Milwaukee does have some good torque, okay? It never needed to take a break on me. If it couldn't do it, it couldn't do it. If it could do it, it would do it. When it came down to comfortability, I, overall I felt the tool was very comfortable. One of the features that you guys pointed out, which I had to agree with, was the paddle switch that it actually had. You would oftentimes get run into a situation with a wiring harness where it might get in the way. I found myself actually liking this trigger style a little bit better than I did the paddle style. Now the Matco has the paddle style, which I still use, and I love it, but it also doesn't have any way of being able to catch it if anything else, it just kind of slides right off, right? But, but there's no open-ended spot or groove in between the paddle and the tool. It's pretty much just a triangular shape or 45, but it's a solid plastic piece. So for that, I didn't have any problems with the Matco. Okay, going back over to Milwaukee for a second, another feature that you guys did not like was the fact that the selector switch was so recessed and almost flush with the tool as you get older, it becomes more and more difficult to grab it and turn it, okay? I have to agree with you on that. When it came to the snap-on, it does stand out more and it is easier to turn and manipulate back and forth. One of the things that I wasn't a huge over-the-top fan of and maybe it needs some break-in period with the snap-on was the anvil. Putting sockets on and off, you could see that it was, it's, a, it's really tight, right? So it took me some effort there in the beginning to get the socket on and off. I didn't have that issue with the Milwaukee, but of course, if I dropped the tool or whatever, the socket would naturally go flying off. I know you're gonna say, well, you dropped it, so that was a battery broke. No, 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 no. The battery would break under its own circumstance and use. I'm saying if I was to set it down hard or drop it even a little bit and it caught itself, the socket would come off. So for that, the Anvil, super, super tight tolerance when it comes to holding on to sockets for snap-on. All right, so we tried out the Earthquake XT. You have my opinion about the Milwaukee Fuel. One last complaint that you guys made mention of with the Milwaukee Fuel was the head design was too big to get into certain spots. I cannot disagree with you, but I did not have the long reach. I had the standard reach. One dislike or one concern 
of the snap-on was the head design was gonna be too big. I have not found that to be the case just yet. Overall, final opinion and thoughts. Okay, here's what it comes down to. I had thought about buying the Cobalt way too long, way too bulky for my profession. I had thought about going with the Craftsman way too long, way too bulky for my profession. I thought about the Makita, same thing, falls in the same exact category. It's not gonna do it for me as a, a heavy line tech working in the engine bay. So it came down to very few options, okay? There was the one from Home Depot in the Husky lineup, 60 bucks, I think it was like 30 foot pounds. Nah, too weak, right? Then there was the Earthquake XT. Was very interested in that, tried it out today. Didn't work out for us, didn't even do half of what it, what it said it was gonna do. The third option would have been Power, uh, power Torque from O'Reilly's. I'm not even gonna bother. Here are some problems with the cheaper ratchets. Even though the Earthquake XT had a battery that came out that you could charge, not plug into the battery, but separately charge on a charger. They do not sell separate batteries to add to it because when you're using these tools all throughout the day, every single day, you're gonna wanna replace some batteries at some point or extra batteries on the backup. So while one's charging, you can use another. I didn't see an option to buy extra batteries or a charger separately from the actual tool and the kit itself. It's the same problem with Power Torque. It's the same problem with Husky. It's the same problem with the bond that you can find on Amazon. So when it comes down to it, what are we left with? Well, in my opinion, in my area, we're left with Matco and we're left with Snap-on. And in my opinion, between the two, Snap-on's the way to go. I am feel very bad for Tommy and the unfortunate circumstance that he had to deal with when it came to the Matco Long Reach Ratchet. I thought it was gonna be the Boss Haas too. The RPM is ridiculous on the quarter inch and I haven't had a problem. In fact, you guys saw how kick butt that thing was on the video. Why would I expect anything less from the 3 8 drive? But if you're gonna charge almost 600 bucks for a tool, it dang well better do the job, not break down within the first month, and it better torque or untorque bolts and nuts to the value that's specified on the actual product. These are my thoughts, these are my opinions. I appreciate you guys sharing yours down in the comments. Thanks as always for watching my channel. We'll see you guys next time. Cheers and deuces.